Welcome back. It's time for us to have a conversation about kindling or rekindling the passion in your relationship. My guest this morning is going to join us by Zoom and going to help us to understand um, how to make this happen. What is it that causes relationships to lose passion in the first place? And then how do we rekindle it? Marie Rose Saki, who's a counselor and an entrepreneur, is going to help us to understand that. But before we do that, let's take a look at this. We'll be right back. My husband and I have been married for six years now with three children. We love each other very much and prior to our marriage, we could not get enough of each other. So we decided to get married as soon as the opportunity presented itself. Also, so that we could see each other and feel each other with that passion we had always envisioned. I love my husband, but the passion just isn't there anymore. And that to me is a problem because passion adds that spice to the marriage to keep it glowing. We no longer eat dinner together like we used to because most of the time either of us returns late from work. We would usually try a new place in town but we no longer do that. We could actually sit and watch television without talking to each other. Everything is just dead. It has been blown out just like a candle would go off in the wind. Despite all this, I really do still love my husband. But I no longer feel the passion that was ignited in our relationship. And I want to rekindle that passion to its fullest capacity. Please help me. I want to save my marriage. All right. So you've seen that there. Let me introduce my guest to you. Good morning, Mrs. Saki. How are you? I'm really good. Thank you. So um, help us to understand, what is it that causes, um, you know, so much passion in a relationship to even begin to fade? Thank you very much. As I, as I listen to the lady, I, I only smiled because um, it's not out of, um, her situation is not out of the world or mm. it's not... Um, ahead of it's quite normal, especially looking at her um, how long she's been in marriage. Um, and it, it usually happens when you are so much in love and the passion is aflame and uh, you know you are really excited about everything. you enter the marriage before you realize the children are coming. Yeah, you don't take your time to plan it well. and as soon as the children come, the tempo changes, whether mm. you like it or not. No matter how prepared you are, the tempo changes because the children are so young, they need a lot of time. Yeah. And with that kind of background, you hear a lot of um, young couple married between the, um, for about one to six, seven years, you hear a lot of those complaints. That doesn't mean that those who've been in, uh, marriages for a long time also don't experience this passion, you know, fading out. But it is very normal. That's one thing I want to assure her. It is very normal. It happens in every relationship. And like she rightly said, that it's like a candle that has been blown off. Mm. But she should remember that when you blow a candle off, it can always be ignited again. You can always light your candle back. Mm. It is a question of your desire. It's a question of your... Uh, preparedness to, to light your candle back. Mm. So, so I, I believe that she's experiencing these things because of um, the situation. Because I see she has three children already. In six years, she has three children. Yeah. She's working. Her husband is working. So there will be a lot of tension. Mm. So if she wants to reignite or rekindle the passion in the marriage, then she has to start doing certain things. I don't know the age uh, gaps between the children, but I'm sure that the elders of the children won't, won't be more than six years or five years. Yeah. You know, so they are pretty young. So yeah. she has to decide. Definitely she loves her husband because nobody has offended anybody. Mm. Her husband has not done anything to her. It's just because you had some kind of addition to your previous situation which was only you and your husband, which was easy to manage. Yeah. But now you had three more visitors in mm -hmm. that you have to take care of and, and they can really drain you. 
they can drain you so much that you wouldn't have excitement for anything. So the first thing I'll talk about is that she has to sit down with her husband and take, make plans as to how they're going to get the fire back okay. in their relationship. Yes. One thing with the children, because they are children in, one suggestion I'll make, or the first suggestion I'll make, is that periodically they have to have a time away. Only the two of them. Either they move out of their house, or they get somebody to come and take the children away, or they take the children to somebody. So if she, they, she has her parents living around here, they are not far away, or the man's has, uh, the husband's family are here, they can arrange from time to time to take the children there so that they can have time alone over their, the weekends or the times that they are free. Both of them are free because they go to work. So I assume that Monday to Friday will be quite busy. Mm. But the weekends, they could plan something. Not only that, if they don't have any of their parents around, you can have a network of couple, couple friends. Okay. You know, your, your friends who are married with children and all that. It is very, very good to have that. If you don't have that, they have to start considering that. It is very good to have that kind of circle where they also understand the situation of a married person, you know, with children. And then you can be rotating. So what you do is that um, if you don't have parents uh, around to support you with your children and all that for you to be able to get away, then you get your friends. You can take the children to another couple's place where they can be occupied, where there are children that they can play with. And with that, when you look at um, uh, that situation, it's like a give and take. Uh, today, I would sit and, and sacrifice and take care of all the children while the others go and have fun. And then the next time it will be the other person's turn. It, you come to that kind of understanding where you take the pressure off you because the pressure of raising kids can, can, can pour water, I'll call it, pour water on your fire. It will yeah. kill it, quench it hmm. completely in your marriage. And if you don't get hold of it right now, then it will become very, um, it will be escalated or it will become very, very bad hmm. in years to come. So when you have these things, so she shouldn't blame herself, she shouldn't blame her husband, she shouldn't blame anybody. It is no um, influence from outside or whatever. It happens. But she should take hold of it and say that I am going to do this. So first of all, she should learn to take a break from time to time, take the children away from her and even rejuvenate herself, she herself, since she feels so drained she has to, first of all, have time for herself, you know, have time. And then she should also, I, I realize that sometimes some young couple give too much freedom to their children. They are so excited about the children. They allow the children to do whatever, and it drains your energy mm. to be able to plan the children's life, give them a, a kind of a routine. The time they wake up, time they eat, time they play, that time they, they learn, time they sleep. Yeah. I would baby or a child be loitering around after 7, 7 p.m. Hmm. How are you going to catch up your energy? So you have to train them. When you have a baby, don't get too excited. Oh, this is my baby. This is my baby. is like this or that. So you just allow the baby to have his or her own tempo. You tune the baby. When the baby comes, tune the baby. Change the baby's um, tempo in, in doing things or routine. And you realize that you would you you can easily tell, oh, two o'clock, the child is supposed to eat. Uh, three o'clock, she's supposed to have a little shower. Um, five o'clock, she's supposed to eat. By six, you play with her a little bit and all that. And then you, 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 you buy the child, put the child to sleep so that from seven o'clock or 7 p.m., you can have quality time with your husband. The two of you can have a breathing space because the children would have slept. But if you don't do that and you allow the children to walk around and, and disturb you till they want to sleep, then you always be carrying forward tiredness and, and pressure will build on and your excitement will completely go. Hmm. And the other scenario too is that if the husband is not helping her, then I would say that the husband will have to put in some help. The husband will have to put in some help 
to take the pressure of the woman. Mm. Most of the time, that passion goes out of the woman first because a lot of, once, once you have a family, whether we like it or not, you know, it's the woman who does a lot. The children will naturally run to mommy, everything, mommy, 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 mommy. Yes, men of today are doing very well, helping with family things, but still, the mommy factor, because you born with the baby in your in your belly before the baby is born and all that, there's that connection. And there's some things that it's only mommy that can do it, you know? Yeah. And so it, it takes a lot of energy out of you. So the man has to also try to help her with the children or with household chores and all that. If, if it means that they have to get a helper in, they should bring a helper in to be able to bring down her um uh, her, her, her energy yeah, yeah. Her, her tiredness or the pressure yeah, yeah. so that the energy will, will build up that is also another point that she can look at if she wants to ignite like i said if she wants to ignite that that or rekindle that passion you know and then um she should also think of looking at going back to memory lane okay the, to every couple, whether you are 100 years old in marriage or whatever, it's always good to play back because times and seasons changes. Times are not the same, mm. you know, and we change as people. But we always have to remember where we started from. Where did we start from? Going down the memory lane, it helps a lot to bring up or spice up the relationship, spice up the marriage. You can, some of the tactics you can use in going down memory lane is, is looking at pictures, your wedding pictures, your old pictures. Mm. You know, when you took, before you married, you got married, when you, when you were, you know, trying to get each other's attention, when you became, when you consented to each other and when you married, those exciting photographs. You can take one evening as you sit down watching TV, be looking at pictures and remembering things. You can also go to familiar places where you used to go. It will rekindle that 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 that, that, that passion. Mm. Places if you go for movies or if you used to go to beaches or you had time to um, go for programs together and all that. Recreate those situations so that you can be able to relive and as you are reliving what has happened in the past mm. it will build up the passion especially because um the part like uh, like she rightly said the passion is not out because of offense nobody has offended any none, none of them has offended each other mm. you know it's not because uh maybe the husband had gone to uh have to chase women or anything like that it's basically the energy is gone down or the passion is gone down mm. because she's overburdened with three children, three children in six years. It, yeah. is, it is a lot of work. So she can go down memory lane and, and do some of these things, look at pictures, watch, watch your, wedding, wedding, your wedding video. Mm. Watch your wedding video, see how, how things were, how excited you were, how you were looking forward to, you know, and, and visit friends, you have to have friends. When you are all by yourself, you you, tell, you, you you can get gagged, you know, with all the pressures of being in a house with children and the same routine going going and coming, go to work and come home, take care of children, uh, prepare them to sleep, eat, sleep, wake up. It becomes monotonous and it's, it, it can be very tiring. Mm. So, the best situation is to have other, like I said, that having other couple friends really help a lot that you can call at any time. You can pass by, visit, they can come to you and visit, share experiences. Then you know that you are not alone. When you when you share experiences with others and you realize that you are not alone, it, it kind of brings your, your, your um, stress down. It brings your anxiety down, which doesn't lead to depression and all other things. Yeah. So this is what I think that um, mommy or whatever. Mamli. Um, mamli. Oh, okay. Mamli. Mamli should be looking at these are uh, things she should be. She should look for trustworthy 
two or three couple friends yeah. that they can be exchanging. Sometimes, you, you know, when, when, when you have couple friends like that and you are together and talking and the men are talking, the women are talking, you realize that, oh, oh it happens here too <laughs> about the children and all that. It, mm. it, it takes your um, energy down. It, it, I, I don't know why I keep saying it takes your energy. It takes your pressure down, mm. you know, because mm. you need the energy, not you, you need the energy to rekindle yeah. and it also decide our mind plays a lot on us our minds you know she yeah. shouldn't just sit there and say that oh the excitement or the passion is all gone so um it's like a candle has been blown away yeah. and all that yeah. the candle is blown away but the candle is not done okay the candle is still sitting there all right we can always it and blow it off and light it and blow it off and it is an understanding she has to have that mm. once you are in a relationship, you 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 not always be going uphill. There are times yeah. you plateau. There are times you come down. There are times you go up. She has to understand the tempo, right. but she has to be in charge of herself. Take charge of her her thinking. When she realizes things are not going the way she wants, she should take action. Right. She should take charge. Thank she you. should talk to her husband. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Um, I think you've given us some pretty amazing pointers. Uh, Mamle is watching, and I believe that um, she will be able to pick some of those things. Um, I hope she's written everything down, but she'll be able to pick up some of those things and apply them to her life and immediately um, begin to see some changes. Uh, thank you very much to you, uh, Mrs. Marie Rosaki. Mrs. Marie Rosaki is a counselor and an entrepreneur and she's been helping us to understand how it is that we can rekindle passion in a relationship some of the pressures that come uh, for example children and so on but we can rekindle and it doesn't have to be just the fact that the wind has blown out the candle doesn't mean the candle is finished it's not we can relight it